guys, it's Mama Vega again. Last time we talked about plant-based foods. We're still gonna talk about plant-based again this time, but the last time I talked specifically about protein and a little bean called mung bean. This time what I wanna do is I wanna show you the differences in proteins and cholesterols and all those kind of things to explain to you why plant-based is a better option, although many of you are still going to eat the meat, just like we said the last time. I get it, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't or wouldn't, or to, I'm not gonna tell you that because some of you are gonna do it anyway. As soon as I say don't do it, that's the very first thing you're gonna do, which is why I don't believe in diets. But I do wanna show you the difference in meats versus beans, specifically I'm doing beans. Last time we talked about the mung bean. And remember I showed you the mung bean. It's very tiny, 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 tiny like this. And one serving of the mung beans is about two ounces. This is what that looks like if it's two ounces of dried beans, okay? Two ounces of dried beans look like this. However, if I take it and I add water to it, this is how that swells up. That was originally two ounces and now it swole up to four ounces. Later on in this video, you will get a chart and you will see the nutritional comparisons of beans versus meat and you will also see some of the things that they will do. So I wanted to show you this. These little beans right here are going to give you approximately 24% um, somewhere in there of your protein that you would need for the day. These little ones right here is about 24%. However, I can take those same beans, okay, and I'm dumping that out so you can see. This would be one of your percentages there. And I can take these, which are lupini beans. These lupini beans, this is approximately 3.5 ounces that I started with. 3.5 ounces is going to give you about 72% of your protein that you would need for the day. But when I add water to it, this is what that grows to be. So look at this. Now if I take these and I add these with it, the two of these together will give you approximately 96% of the protein that you need for one day. 96% just from these two things. And in addition to you getting the protein, you're also going to get fiber. It's going to not have cholesterol. You're going to have all these other beneficial things that you will get from just these two. So now if I take these two and I take it and I smash them up like this, you end up with the beans. And you see down on the bottom, you have the one that I smashed up. You can take these, you can mix them together like this just by mixing them together. And because they're like this, and they also have a stickiness or a little bit of, you know, where you can mold them together, I don't really need to add a whole bunch of other things unless I want to add some seasonings to it. I can add my seasonings, and then I can form these into little meatballs. I can use an air fryer. I can put them in the oven. I can put them in a pasta sauce, or I, can take them and turn them into a burger. And I do a lot with black beans, so I make black bean burgers, doing the same concept and adding various beans to it so that I can get my 100% of my protein for the day just by doing this and not having to worry about cholesterol. And if you were to look at my chart later on and you look at the different beets and you look at the chicken and ground chicken, one of the things I noticed was in the ground, tur ground turkey and ground chicken, I was like, how does ground turkey have vitamin C? I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. And then I looked at the ingredients and I noticed they added rosemary to it. So the reason you have vitamin C there is because of rosemary, but other than that, it doesn't have any fiber, it doesn't have anything, and then people will say, oh, you know, Kobe beef, Kobe burgers, they're so good and it's so expensive. But look at my chart and you're gonna see how much fat it has, how much cholesterol it has, because that's what causes your body not to be able to digest. It's actually the fats in the foods, the fats in the meat 
that's the very last thing that your body is able to digest. It slows down the digestive process. So that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why dietitians and nutritionists will tell you, well, if you're gonna eat chicken or you're gonna eat turkey, don't eat the skin. Many of you are going, well, that's the best part, is the skin, because it has all that juice and all the other stuff in it, that's true. But that's also the fat that slows down your digestion. Did you know that it takes 24 to 72 hours for your body to digest meat? So those of you who are meat eaters, the reason you're having the problems with your colon and you're having the uric acid and all of that is because you may be eating meat for breakfast, you may have some for lunch, then you have some for dinner, then the next day you have breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's only 24 hours. Now you have a third day. So look at how many times you've had meat and the one you had on the first day hasn't even digested yet because it takes 24 to 72 hours. Whereas if you're eating vegetables, vegetables will take anywhere from three to 12 hours depending upon the vegetable that you're eating. But the vegetables are also giving you fiber. The fiber is what's slowing everything down. And because it's slowing down the digestive process, what it's also doing is it's helping you to do that little poop factor that you need to get. Because you should be pooping three to five times a day, but now if you are eating the meats, you're getting what I call a food traffic jam. It ain't going nowhere. It's sitting there, it's rotting. And if you wanna see whether I'm telling the truth or not, take a piece of meat, season it, put it in the oven, leave it in there at 98 degrees for 24 to 72 hours and then see if you want to eat it or not. Chances are you don't. Well, that's what happens in your gut, in your stomach. You've just messed up your whole flora. That causes a problem. The other thing I want to mention is that women are always, oh my gosh, I eat the same thing that my husband eats and you know he's losing weight and I'm not losing weight. There is a physiological reason for that. And the reason is, it takes women longer to digest food than it does for men. So therefore, your digestion is slowed down. So since the digestion is slowed down, you're retaining that food longer, which means you need to up those vegetables and eat more vegetables than he's eating, and that will help you. So all of these things are things you can do. I also sometimes like to add you know, quinoa. And I have two different kinds. I have you know, this one which is like a rainbow type and then I also have this one over here which is red. Depending on what I'm doing, I like colors in my food. Remember the last time I talked about eat the rainbow? Well, I like eating the rainbow because I like adding all kinds of colors. But in me adding quinoa, I'm also adding more protein. So I've just added a little bit more protein. So although I only got 96%, I can add a little bit of this in there and now I have 100%. So I went from 96 to 100. But if you look at the percentage of protein that you have in the other meats and you look at the fat that's in it and you look at the cholesterol, you're gonna go, well, I really don't think I wanna do that. So the meats are going to be high in fat and high in cholesterol. And that's really why the doctors are telling you not to eat the meats. And that's because they're raising your cholesterol, but the reason they're raising your cholesterol is because they are cholesterol, they're full of cholesterol. They're also full of all the antibiotics that the animals have. So now when you eat that, you're eating the antibiotics that they have, which is slowing down your immune system because now your immune system has all been altered and changed and screwed around and everything. The other thing that I like to add sometimes is I like to add these. These little things right here. This is couscous. But look, I, have, I found a new one. I found a new one. These one, I saw these and these were like the tiny ones and they swell up too. But because I work with people who like to have texture in their food, I found these. I went to a Middle Eastern store and I found these because I shop at all different ethnic stores. I go to every single one you can think of. If there's one, if it's in Chinatown, I go to Chinatown. If it's up in Northern California, I'll go there. Wherever it is, I just kind of cruise through and see what I can find that I haven't seen before. And I already had some couscous. I was like, oh, these are cute. But then when I saw these, I was like, oh, wow, these are bigger, so I wanted these. So now I can add both of them to it, and now you have two different sizes of couscous. Then I might add a little bit of barley to it, and I add all kinds of other things, and it's like, oh my gosh. And the people, when they taste it, they're like, oh 
that's a good question because I don't remember because I just threw a whole bunch of stuff in there. I asked somebody the other day, do you make goulash? I was like, sure I do. That's really easy to do because I don't have to keep a recipe for that. I can just throw some stuff together. So here I am with the things that I did there. And when you look at the video here, you're going to see a few little things that will pop in and out, including a chart. The chart is not complete, but the chart will give you an idea of some things that you should do. And like I said, and I always say in all of my things, although this is not seasoned, and since I'm plant-based, I can eat this without anything on there. And like Mama Vega always says, now chew on this.